أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدي وحبيبي عبد القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الهاديين المهديين الذين أرهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Before we start there is a request of Surah Al-Fatiha for one of the sisters who passed away in California her name is Mrs. Malihib Pur Tahma Sabi May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her soul. So please, Surah Al-Fatiha for your soul. Bismillah. Also, another Surah Al-Fatiha for your marhumin as well. May Allah be pleased with all of them, inshallah. Bismillah. Allah. Also, as another Surah Al-Fatiha for ourselves, when we go where they are, inshallah. May Allah be pleased with all of us. Bismillah. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ This ayah comes to also continue to describe al-munafiqoon in Surah al-Baqarah. We mentioned in the previous ayah, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخَرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ We mentioned almost three or four attributes or the qualities of munafiqoon. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also talks about one of the qualities of munafiqoon. That if you want to know them, one of the, their actions, one of the things they do, according to Quran, is called al-khidda. But before I translate this, <clears throat> I want all of us to take this very seriously. Why? Because simple is this, simple as this. If I go to buy a camera, it's an example that we live in day in and day out. <clears throat> I go and buy a camera or I buy a computer. Every computer or every camera, they come with manual. How do you operate them? How do they work? Where do you press in order to press to start? Where do you press to turn it off? Now this manual that we we get with the item, if I say I bought this camera, I bought this computer, but I don't want to go with this manual, which the company which did the item or manufactured this thing, if I say I'm not gonna go with it, I'm gonna generate my own and go according to my own. 
Do you think the item will work properly? Of course not. I buy a computer, I say, no, the manual is in trash. I'm going to sit down and generate my own manual. Whether it will work or not, it doesn't matter, but I will generate mine. Never, it will not work. Why? Because the person or the company which made this item, they know it more than you and I. And that's why they tell you, if you want it to work properly, this is the step you have to follow. <clears throat> With this, I say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created all of us. Allah is like the company which makes the computer. He knows every one of us more than we know ourselves. And this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about every one of these group. al muttaqun it tells you how they are. Then you come to Kufar, it tells you what they are. Now he's talking about al munafiqun So it's not like a scenario somebody is trying to let you think something that is not true. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator and the one who knows them more than anybody else. Is now telling you about this munafiqun. And he said in Surah Al Tawbah, La ta'alamuhum nahnu na'alamuhum. Allah said, Ya Rasulullah, you are the wise man, the smartest person, but still you don't know them, Ya Rasulullah. Some of them, they are hidden among your companions that you cannot tell who they are. But I, Allah, nahnu na'alamuhum. We know them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now giving you an eye, uh, describing, identifying those munafiqun in this eye. Now in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يُخَادِعُونَ Allah." What are the things they do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they always deceive. يُخَادِعُونَ Always. Because look at the word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُسِيغَةِ الْمُضَارَةِ Allah didn't say khada'u. No, like in, in the previous ayah, when he talked about the kuffar, he said khatama Allah ala kulubihim in the form of past tense, right? But when he comes to the munafiqun, he said yukhadi'un. Yukhadi'un in Arabic is called sigatul mudara. It's a present tense in Arabic. And in Arabic, al mudara yufidu dawam wal istimrar. In Arabic, present tense, it means continuously and all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this munafiqun, what they do is, they always have the habit of deceiving, misguiding, misleading. That's what they do. Here, there is one important message in Arabic word. In Arabic, we have khada'a and we have khada'a. Two words, and they all came from one root, but they mean two different things. See, in Arabic, if Allah said, if Allah would have said, khada'u, uh, yahda'un, it means it's one part. Meaning, one party is the one who do the deceiving. But the ayah didn't say that. Allah said, yukhadi'un. In Arabic, when the word comes on this form, khada'a, fa'ala, it call lil musharaka, meaning it's two part. Meaning, I am doing and the other party also is doing the same. That's why in Arabic, when you say tashajara, meaning two party, one fight the other and the other fight back. That's called tafa'ala. Here in the ayah, Allah said, يُخَادِعُونَ Meaning, it's like two parties. Allah said, this munafiqun, they deceive, and the other party also, which is Allah, also deceive. Allah Allah. Allah deceived too? No. Here, our Mufassirun, they have two tafsir. They say there are two tafsir. Tafsir number one. They say the reason why Allah used يُخَادِعُونَ to mean like two sides, he said, those munafikun, they have got to the point because of their bad action, because they deceive Allah, they get to the, world, to the point where now they think everyone deceived like they are. So in their mind, they think, since we deceive Rasulullah and we deceive Allah, 
Allah also is that what is doing what? Is deceiving us as well. That's why Allah used يخادعون الله But in reality Allah doesn't deceive. That is tafsir number one. Tafsir number two. Allah spent on it يخادعون الله They deceive. They say the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word يخادع is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to tell them that in case you think in your own mind that you are the ones who know how to manipulate remember Allah is the one who created this manipulation and he knows more than you do so even if you think in your mind you know how to how to do bad things Allah know more than you that is why Allah used you khadi'un Allah and this khad'a it doesn't exist in the dictionary of a mu'min a mu'min is always straight and doesn't deceive anybody even if that is going to affect his interest a mu'min Deceiving doesn't exist. When you see a person, he deceives, he lies, he manipulates, that is not a mu'min. A mu'min doesn't deceive. And you can tell this, not even our imams, even in the companions of imams. One example is Muslim Bunaqeel, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. One of the ambassadors of Imam Hussein Alayhi Salam. And this is one of the lessons. From Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam that Muslim Bunaqil when he entered Kufa and he stayed with one of his friends, one of the other companions, called Hani ibn Hurwa. They were living together. He hosted him. He was living with him. Then what happened? Then Hani brought a suggestion. What was it? What was the suggestion? He says to Muslim bin Aqil, you know, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad is the main problem. If we can kill him, everything will be solved. The problem will be finished. So what do you want us to do? Muslim bin Aqil asked him. Hani ibn Urwa said, I think we should invite him over to my house. Okay, then what? When he comes, then you hide in the room. When he comes, he's sitting, we're talking. Then I'm going to give you a sign. As soon as you hear the sign, you come, rush, and kill him, and the problem is over. Deal. Muslims say deal. Okay. Deal. Yes. Now, they're going to invite him, and he, over the level Ziyad, didn't know, doesn't know that. This was the plan. Hani ibn Urwa extended their invitation to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he had a good friendship with Hani ibn Urwa. He came to the house, welcome, they sat, food, everything. Muslim ibn Aqil was in the room. Then Hani ibn Urwa, as they planned, he gave a sign for Muslim to come out. Muslim didn't come out. First sign. He thought maybe he didn't hear. Maybe he was busy, he wasn't paying attention. Second sign. Muslim didn't show up. <coughs> Third sign. Muslim didn't show up. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> what happened? Four, fifth. Of Adilla Buziyad. He realized that hmm, something wrong is going here. This sign, one, two, three, I think these guys are plotting something. So what happened? He immediately asked permission and he left. Right after he left, Hani ibn Urwa went to Muslim bin Aqil. Ya Muslim, ma manaka an takhruj? Why didn't you come out after I signed first, second, third? What happened? Muslim bin Aqil said, Mana'ani hadith Rasulillah. Allahu Akbar. He said, what stopped me from coming out was the hadith of the Holy Prophet. Khair inshallah. What was the hadith? <coughs> I heard the Prophet said, Al Mu'min la yagdur wa la yakhda. Mu'min will never deceive or misguide or mislead. 
And I didn't want to be one of those. Allahu Akbar. If it was Muslim would have killed, if he would have killed Umar, Umar Dilla bin Ziyad, the problem would have solved. But because the Prophet said, do not deceive, and it's not one of the qualities of Mu'min, he said, I would not do it. That is not in the dictionary of a Mu'min. So that is one of the things also. All, every one of us should evaluate myself and see if I deceive other people, it doesn't matter if I call myself Mu'min or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, one of the things that munafiqun do is yukhadi'oon Allah. And here, Allah said, yukhadi'oon Allah. Amazing, when you look at this ayah, Allah didn't mention the Prophet. Yukhadi'oon Allah, walladheena amanu. Where's Rasulullah in the picture? Here there are two tafsir too. Tafsir number one. They said, yukhadi'oon Allah, is Kinaya and Rasulullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention himself instead of Rasulullah to talk about the importance of Rasulullah. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to tell us that if you deceive Rasulullah, you're deceiving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do something against the Prophet, you're doing it against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do something right, to Rasulullah, you're doing it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is one ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna alladheena yubayi'oonak tahta shajara innama yubayi'oon Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the mu'mineen, those who were given the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the pledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they are pledging to you, Rasulullah. But in reality, they are pledging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So pledging to Rasulullah is like pledging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is tafsir number one. That's why Allah said, يُخَادِعُونَ Allah. They are plotting and deceiving Allah and not the Prophet. Even though the action is happening to the Prophet, but it is so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put himself in that place. That is tafsir number one. Tafsir number two. They said, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't put the Prophet there. He put in his name because in the mind of Munafiqun, even though they deceive Rasulullah, but they think because Rasulullah doesn't know. So even Allah also doesn't know as well. So in their mind, we are deceiving Rasulullah and his God as well. That's why Allah said, يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُ They're deceiving Allah. And they're deceiving those who believe as well. And that is one of the things that munafiqun do. And you can see during the time of Imam Ali as well. They always try to deceive people. Now let me share with you one story about Imam Ali alayhi salam, during his time, how Munafiqun was trying to deceive people. There is this story, it's called a woman called Al Ghamidiyya. And this story happened at the time of the Prophet, and the same thing happened at the time of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And Allahu Akbar, the same thing the Prophet did was the same thing Imam Ali did. Dhurriyatun ba'duha min ba'd. What happened? A woman came to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Ya Rasul, ya Imam Ali, ya Sayyidi, inni imra'atun zanayt. I committed fornication. So what do you want to do? He said to Imam Ali, tahir me. I want you to purify me. What does he mean? <coughs> Meaning do had punishment. Allahu Akbar. Look at the iman of this woman. She did haram, but she came forward to the Prophet and said to Imam Ali Ali said, she said, Ya Amir al muminin I want you to purify me. Imam Ali Ali salam, you know what he did? He turned his face away, away from her. Then she came back to the other side of Imam Ali. Ya Amir al muminin inni zanaytu tahirni. Allah Imam Ali turned his face. Well, I know what this means. Imam Ali want to tell her that Islam is not the, the religion of punishment and bloodshed. No. Islam is the religion of mercy. And you can you hear this at the end of the story. 
Now what happened? Then Imam Ali salam said to her, but you're pregnant, right? She said, no. She said, if we have to punish you for what haram, whatever haram you have done, but what about the baby? The baby is innocent. We have no right to punish the baby. Now, if we punish you and something happened to you and the baby died, what am I going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then Imam Ali told her, go and tell you have a baby. Then if you want, come back. Allah, if you want, come back. She wants. Six months, seven months, eight months, nine months. She delivered the baby, she came back. You think she's dumb, right? He has women that say, this lady is dumb. Why in the world that you make haram? You want to be punished? You were given go and then you come in back? Allahu Akbar, Iman. If it's rooted in a person, you're concerned about the punishment of Akhara, not in this world. Because even if you escape this punishment of this dunya, what guarantee do I have that I can escape the punishment of Akhara? And if I cannot stand the punishment of human being, what tells you you can stand the punishment of Jibreel or any other angel? So she came back again to Imam Ali. Ya Amir al Mu'minin, I have a baby. Now I'm free. You can go ahead and do the punishment. <clears throat> Imam Ali salam said, do you have somebody who's going to take care of this baby? She said, no. Imam Ali said, okay, no. If we do the had, the punishment, and something happened to you, who will take care of this baby? Imam Ali said, go and take care of this baby for two years, nurse him, and then if you feel bad, if you feel, come back. Allah Akbar. He took the baby, she left. And while this is happening, there is one of the munafiqun. It's called Hurayt ibn Mughira. He was there. The first time he was there, the second time he was there too. The lady took the baby, left. After two years, she came back again. Ya Amir al This is the baby, it's now two years, alhamdulillah. You can go ahead and do the had. Imam Ali salam said, okay. Now, in case you die in this process of the punishment, do you have anybody who can take care of this child? No, 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 no. I don't have anybody. You don't? Go and take care of him until he becomes seven years old. Here, when Imam said this, then this Hurayt ibn Muhira, he was sitting there, and he said to Imam Ali, Ya Ali, إلى متى تعدل حدود الله؟ الله أكبر. He said, Imam Ali, say, Ya Ali, up to when you will keep postponing the rule of Allah? That's munafiq, huh? He was telling Imam Ali is postponing the rule of Allah. Then Imam Ali <coughs> said, Ya Hurayf, إن المشكلة أنكم لا تفهمون دين الله. The problem I'm having with you, munafiqun, is that you don't understand the religion of Allah. Then Imam Ali said to him, Listen here, it becomes hujjah upon you. You have to take care of this child, whether you like it or not, so we can do the hal. But the problem is, this Hurayz was misleading and misguiding people that Imam Ali salam is postponing the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is how Imam Ali dealt with them during his time. That is one of the Munafiq And many of them. Tonight, I want to take you into some part of the life of Imam Ali salam. And I really want us to pay attention from this part of the Imam Ali's life. One of the lessons that I want all of us to learn, to learn myself first and anybody second, is that to learn how Imam Ali salam was attached to the house of Allah. Attachment to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because being servant of the house of Allah or working in the house of Allah, sometimes we think, no, it's not something I have to do. I have my own work. I have this, this, this. Wallahi al-Azim, brothers and sisters, serving the house of Allah is the best job you can ask anybody to do. And I'll give an example in Quran. 
in Surah Maryam. You know, Zachariah is one of the prophets of Allah, right? Zachariah. Zachariah, before him, there was Imran, the mother of Maryam. She was, they were asking Allah to give them a child, a son. You know, what do they want the son to do? To become a pilot? No. To become an engineer? No. To become what? To become a servant in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all they want. Imran, a Nabi, he was not asking Allah, a child who can go make a lot of good business, big money, home. No, they want somebody to be in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all they do, to serve the house of Allah. Then what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to test them. Then Allah gave them Maryam. When they have the Maryam, they were disappointed. They said, Rabbi, inni wadatuha unta. She said, woman, yeah, Allah, I ask you for a boy. Why? Because they know that a woman, there are certain restrictions on a woman. That number one, she can get married. When she get married, she, uh, she will be under the mercy of her husband. Her husband might not allow her to come to the masjid and work for the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they were disappointed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered them. Allah said, I know more than you. What you give birth to. I know she's a woman, but I give you. Because I know what I give you. <clears throat> Allah said, I know. A woman is not like a man. They have differences. But then Allah gave them one surety. One surety. What you worried about? Shaitan. And not to be on the straight path and to be the servant of the house of Allah. They said, I will protect that. I will make sure that that happens. Now, what happened? Immediately after Maryam became a grew up, she dedicated her life for the house of Allah. That is the importance of serving the house of Allah. That Maryam, all her life, all she does is to be in the temple, in the house of Allah, cleaning, taking care of the masjid. Now put Maryam aside. You come to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. He opened his eyes, where? In the house of Allah. Close his eyes, where? In the house of Allah. No human being, no prophet, Allah ever given this right or this value and this respect that is open his eyes in the house of Allah and he served the house of Allah till the last minute not only that remember in the history when the prophet moved to Mecca to Medina and he built the masjid a lot of companions they have doors right from the house to the masjid from the house to the masjid Allah ordered the Jabra'il Ya Jabra'il tell Rasulullah to close all the doors, except one door, other than the prophet's door. What door is that? Amir. Why? Because the house of Imam Ali is also considered a masjid. Fi buyutin adin Allahu an yur an tu an yurfa wa yuzkar fi asma. Allah subhanahu wa taala said there are seven houses. He gave permission that his name should be mentioned. Look in Tafsir. Which houses are those? The house of Ali Bayt One of them is Imam Ali Now what happened? Imam Ali all his life, he was a servant of masjid. Today, most of us, when we come to the masjid, mashallah, it's like somebody chasing him with a gun, right? After Salat, we want to run away. Allah, look in the life of the Imam Ali When you go to the masjid, after Salah, he was always the last person to leave. What does he do? After his taqibat, after everything that he does, and then he sit there also to do what? To do hukum, rule. A husband and wife has a problem. What does he solve it? In the masjid. A brother and a sister, or a brother and a brother, a mother and a child, every problem that they have in, in the society, Imam Ali always solves it in the masjid. Not only that, a marriage's weddings also happening in the masjid. 
When somebody passed away, where did they do the funeral? In the masjid. Imam Ali alayhi salam has a special attachment to the masjid. And that is one of the lessons that I want all of us to take from Imam Ali tonight. That all his life was dedicated to be a servant of the house of Allah. And let me share with you last thing, brothers and sisters. When you get a chance, read Surah al Sabbath. Because sometimes somebody can say, okay, if I become a servant of the masjid, clean, work for the separate house of Allah, what do I get? Allah, there's a beautiful ayah in the Quran about Sulaiman and Nabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sulaiman, we give him shayateen. Meaning? Jinn. Not only jinn. Waqayr. The birds. Humans. They all serve in him under his, under his, his supervision. They do everything he wants. They go deep into the sea to find gold, diamonds, and all that. Now look at this word properly. Allah, when you get a chance, read this ayah and think about it. You know what Allah said? To those who serve Sulaiman, not who serve Allah. No, they serve Sulaiman. And Allah said, Allah said, because they're protecting or they're serving my messenger, Sulaiman, Allah said, we were their protectors. We protecting them. Why? Because they serve my messenger. Now, if you are serving the house of Allah, what do you think Allah is going to do for you? Somebody is serving Prophet Sulaiman. Allah said, I'm protecting those people because they serve my Prophet. Now, if you are serving Allah, what do you expect Allah is going to do for you? That is the importance of being attached to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what Imam Ali used to do. That is number one. Number two, one of the fadail of Imam Ali alayhi salam is what they ask Imam Hanbal, one of the four school of thoughts. They ask him, Ya Imam Hanbal, tell us who is the companion of the Prophet? He said, number one is Abu Bakr. Then who? He said, then Umar. Then who? He said, then Uthman. Then who? He said, that's all I know. Okay, then they say, okay, where did you put Ali? Is that part of the companions? Now listen to his answer. He said, this is from Imam Hanbal. He said, an ashab nabi. He said, your question was about the companions of the Prophet, right? Say yes. He said, you didn't ask me who is exactly like the Holy Prophet. Allah, 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 and we'll bring ourselves. Now look in every tafsir that you can find. Tafsir Fakhr al-Razi, Tafsir Tabari, Tafsir Dur al -Manthur. every tafsir that you can find, they all say, wa anfusana wa anfusakum. The Prophet didn't bring anybody to represent him except Imam Ali alayhi salam. That is Imam. Allam al-Halli, in one of his book, called Bab Hadi Ashar. He has another book also called Al Al Fain and the Shaykh Al Mufid. He also said in that book that when they ask him, "Ma huwa afdal dalil ala afdaliyat Amir al Mu'minin," what is the best what is the best proof that you have that Imam Ali is better than everybody except the Prophet? What do you have as a proof? Dalil akli, huh? Not from the Quran. The dalil akli. He said, "My proof is this." احتياج الكل إليه وعدم احتياجه إلى الكل. The proof that I have is that the fact that everyone, everyone needed Imam Ali عليه السلام, but he never needed anybody. 
to this deal, this truth, the fact that everyone needed Imam Ali alayhi salam. You look in the history, the first Khalifa, the second Khalifa, the third Khalifa, they all needed Imam Ali in the different and different and difficult situation. But not, never at one point Imam Ali alayhi salam said, I need somebody. He said, that is the best proof that he is the best. That is Imam Ali alayhi salam. Now when you come to his taqwa, Allahu Akbar. Imam Ali alayhi salam, his piety, no one can describe. His, his, his piety is beyond description. They say when the night comes, Imam Ali alayhi salam, kama musalliya, he stands to pray, wa jumu'uhu tajri, and he cries all the time. Imam Ali alayhi salam kana kathiru siyam he fast a lot and not only that moreover my brothers and sisters Imam Ali was known to be eating a food nobody has desired in it Imam Hassan alayhi salam talks about the food of his father Imam Hassan alayhi salam he said, my father would not leave his bread around so I can put salt or some type of anything on it. He said, he wanted it to be left as it is. Allah, sometimes they say he breaks the bread with his knees. They ask him, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, why do you eat like this? He said, Allah, it's me, Amir al-Mu'minin. La'alla yatiman. Maybe there might be an orphan somewhere. And often someone who watches and sees me, if I eat something better, something good, I say, I don't want that to break the, the heart of that often. I want the yatim to see my life and say, Alhamdulillah, even though I'm in difficult situation, but looking at Amir al-Mu'minin makes me calm, calm and comforts me. That is Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Hassan alayhi salam say, I put the food in front of my father to eat. What was the food? They said, khiyar, cucumber, bread, dry bread, and what? An onion. What? And milk. What else? That's it. Allahu Akbar. He said, Imam Ali came. He started going around the food. He said, Bulay al Hassan, at Taham liman. Whose food is this? He said, Look at Allah. Imam Ali said to Imam Hassan, Bunaya aturidu an yatula wukufi bayna yadayna. Do you want me to stay longer in front of Allah for questioning? That you leave in this food for me? Allah. Ya Amir al Mu'minin, it's just a bread and milk. La 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 ya Imam Hassan said, I don't know what to lift at that point. Should I lift the milk or should I lift the bread? Allahu Akbar. That is your Mawla Imam Ali alayhi salam. That is Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Imam Hassan alayhi salam, he said most of the time, when he sleeps, kana yabitu jaya. He sleeps without food. He always likes to stay hungry. When we ask him, Lima ya Abba, he said, I want any orphan over there, any part of the world, whatever they remember, they know that there is somebody who is like them. They have a leader who also sleeps without a food so that they don't get breaking heart. That is Imam Ali alayhi salam. Tonight, the narration said, Imam Ali alayhi salam <coughs> invited a doctor to come and take a look at his head to see if something can be done. They say the doctor when he came and he looked at the head of Imam Ali alayhi salam. The first thing he said to Imam Ali, he said, Ya Sayyidi, Al Wasayyid. To my master, did you write your wasayya? What happened? Khair inshallah. I said, because this wound has got to the point that I don't think anything can be done, Ya Amir al Imam Ali alayhi salam, then he started to invite his children. He invited his children to come closer. Imam Hassan alayhi salam came closer. Imam Hussain alayhi salam was not around. 
Imam Ali alayhi salam asked Aina Hussain. Imam Hussain alayhi salam was then found in another room, was crying. After Imam Asr alayhi salam came, Imam Hussain came. Imam Ali alayhi salam asked Mari ma ara Abul Fadl. Why is it that I can't find Abul Fadl among yourself? Where is he? They say, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Abu Fatal Abbas is sitting somewhere in the corner. He has his head between his legs crying for a father like this, Imam Ali alayhi salam, is now going to be lost forever for good. Then Imam Hassan, Imam Ali alayhi salam said to Imam Hassan, as you call Abu Fatal Abbas to come next to me, I want to see him. They invited Abu al-Fadl Abbas. He came and he was crying. Imam Hassan was crying. Imam Hussein was crying. Zainab sallallahu alayha. They all were crying around the father, the most merciful father. Wallah, Imam Ali is our father, all of us. We are all orphans with the death of Imam Ali. Didn't the Prophet say, Ya Ali, ana wa anta abba wa hadhi al ummah. You and I are the fathers of this nation. Now this is our father, Imam Ali alayhi salam, in his last minutes. Then Abu al-Fadl Abbas came closer and he was crying. All the family gathered and all of them were crying. Then Imam, Has Imam Ali alayhi salam said, Ya Abu al-Fadl Abbas, come closer, come more. Imam, Imam Abu al-Fadl Abbas came closer. Then Imam Ali alayhi salam asked, Ya Hussein, taqaddam, come closer too. Imam Hussein alayhi salam came closer. Then he took the hand of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and he said to Abu al-Fadl Abbas, if the ayadai, copy your hands. He opened his hands, then he took the hands of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and he put in the hands of Abu al-Fadl Abbas and he said to Abu al-Fadl Abbas, Ya Abu al-Fadl Abbas, hadihi wa diyati and this is my trust. This is my the stuff. This is something that I'm gonna leave behind for you. I want you to take care of this Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Abu al-Fadl Abbas and the entire family, they all started crying. Then Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Look at his, Imam Musa, his father, Imam Ali alayhi salam. He said, Abba, why is all this? Why are you telling us all this? Then Imam Ali alayhi salam said, Bunay al Hussein, O oh my son, Hussein alayhi salam. I said, The reason why I'm doing this is because the days of your father is very close. The days of your father is coming to an end. What is it, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen? He said to his son, Imam Hussein, He said, Tomorrow at this time I will not be with you. This is the last moment that I have to spend with you. If you have anything that you want to do, this is the time. Because tomorrow at this time, I will be gone for good. You are not going to have a father after for, after tonight. So Ya Hussein, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, then jumped on his father and he started crying. Few years ago, I lost my mother, Fatima alayhi salam. And I was left with you, only Imam Hamir al Mu'mineen. And now you also leave with us. Who is going to take care of us? What Imam Hussein alayhi salam said this. Then Imam Ali alayhi salam look at his daughter Zainab alayhi salam and then he said to her, Ya Zainab alayki bil Hussein, fala tukassiri fi nusrati. Ya Zainab, I say, I, I, I advise you to take care of Hussein alayhi salam. I say, when the day comes that he needed your help, I say, do not hesitate to help your brother Hussein alayhi salam. The narrator said that Imam Ali alayhi salam he started to say his will. What was the will of Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam? Imam Ali alayhi salam has two wills. Inshallah, tomorrow night I'll read you the will of Imam Ali alayhi salam so we can take some lessons from those beautiful and eloquent words of Imam Ali alayhi salam. The narration said that Imam Ali spent all night with his children, with his family, the last moment, the moment that will never come back again. And he was advising them what to do and what not to do. While he was in that situation, Imam Ali alayhi salam asked Imam Hassan, I said, Ayn Abdurrahman, where is the man who hurt me? I said, No, 
will feel good for and say, bring him closer, I want to talk to him. Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, what do you want to do? This is an evil man. I say, I want to talk to him, bring him closer. They brought Abdurrahman bin Muljim al Muradi. He said to him, Ya Abdurrahman, Alam Akun Ni'mal Imam Lak. Wasn't I a good Imam to you? When I was a kind Imam to you? Then he said to him, Abdurrahman bin Muljim al Muradi, Lahnatullah Alay. He looked at the Imam and he said, Afa anta tun kill man finnar? Ya Alay, can you rescue a person who definitely is going to hellfire? Then Imam Ali alayhi salam look at the Imam Hassan alayhi salam and he said these beautiful words. He said, Ya Bunay, askuhu mimma tashrabun. He said, make sure that he drinks from whatever you guys drink. He said, wast wat'amuhu mimma ta'kulun. And make sure that he eat from whatever you eat. He said, do not eat something better and give him something worse. Do not drink something better and give him something worse. He said, Whatever you eat, make sure he eats the same. Whatever you drink, make sure that he drinks the same. Allahu Akbar. Imam Ali alayhi salam. Then he said to Imam Ali, Imam Hassan alayhi salam. He said, Bunay, in a shufit, ala tawalla al qadiyya. If I if, if I feel better, I will take the control. Whatever to do with him will be my responsibility. Wa idha anamant. However, if I die, I say, فَضْرِبُوهُ ضَرْبَ بِضَرْبَ I say, all I want you to do is, he hit me once, I want you to hit him once. That's it, not more than that. Allahu Akbar. Look at the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa salam. Tonight, all Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa salam, were mourning and crying. Tonight, if you stay alive, if you spend all night up, crying and reading dua, you are also joining Ahlul Bayt tonight. Because Imam Hassan, and Hussein and Zainab and all Ahlul Bayt, Abu Fadl Abbas, they spend all their night crying and mourning for their father. This is how Ahlul Bayt spent their night tonight. Imam Ali was crying and all of them were crying. بأحب الخلق إليك بمحمد وعلي وفاطمة والحسن والحسين والتساة المعسوق لنا من ذرية الحسين فرج عنا يا الله فرجا عاجلا قريبا كلمح البصر أو هو أقرب من ذلك We have brothers and sisters who are sick يا الله give them fastest recovery I the Shifa for all of them. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amman yujibu al-mudhtar ila da'ah wa yakshifu al-su'ah. Amman yujibu al-mudhtar ila da'ah wa yakshifu al-su'ah. Amman yujibu al-mudhtar ila da'ah wa yakshifu al-su'ah. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء باسمك العظيم العز الجل الأكرم يا الله تنتعن يا الله 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 اللهم ذاكك عليهم يا الله إلى أمواتكم وأموات المؤمنين رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة مع السلوات اللهم صل على محمد وعلي محمد